Welcome to the Power of Praise with Dr. Savina Lachelle Taylor, pastor of Unity Mission Church. this new year of 2022. We're asking that the Most High God will bless all of us to have a better year this year than we did last year. For those of you who, who do not know, my name is Pastor Savina Lachelle Taylor, and I am the pastor of Unity Mission Church. And we cordially invite each and every one of you to join us for our live service every Sunday beginning at 12 noon. Our address is 1335 Oakman Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. And my topic for today is, will you stand for God in 2022? That is my topic. Will you stand for God in 2022? 22. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes in spite of what's in front of us, in spite of the odds that are against us, we have to purpose in our hearts that we're going to do the right thing for God. We're going to step out there on faith and do what God has called us to do. And as I've told you all multiple times, we were all born with a God-given purpose. And 22, in this year, brothers and sisters, I'm asking all of us not only to find out what that purpose is, but I'm declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus that we're all going to fulfill that purpose in the name of Jesus. What do you say? Hallelujah. <laughs> brothers and sisters, I want to just say this as well. When you purpose in your heart that you're going to step out there on faith and do what God has called you to do, the devil is going to get busy because he knows it too. You have to remember that he's a fallen angel. Once upon a time, he was one of God's archangels, one of the top angels. And then guess what? You think we have haters in 2022? Well, God had a hater at the beginning of times. He had a hater called Satan, a hater called Lucifer. Lucifer got, became so disgruntled against God until God had to kick him out of heaven and kick him down here onto earth. And he declared then and there that he was going to try and do as much harm to God's people as he possibly can. His goal is to kill, steal, and destroy as many of us as he can. And I want you to know that in this day and time, brothers and sisters, the devil is so deceitful. He's at his highest, one of his highest points of deceit right now. And if, look, look at the scripture here. I always have to remind you all of this. This is Revelations chapter 12, verse 9. And it reads as follows. And the great dragon was cast out, cast out of heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceiveth who? The whole world. I have to remind you all of this, because sometimes people will forget that what we're going through right now is part of the devil's deceit. The devil has made it so now that people are comfortable staying at home. But I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that the Bible teaches us to forsake not the assembling of the saints. And those of you who have gathered here today out of obedience to assemble here in the name of Jesus in honor of the Most High God, what a blessing it is for you because you didn't follow that voice. And I know the devil tried to stop each and every one of you from coming. You know why? Because he tried to stop me. When I first woke up, I felt so nauseated. I said, but you know what? I knew it was the devil. Because the only time this happens to me is on Sundays. It only happens every other day I wake up full of energy. And I tell the devil, don't you know you are not going to stop me? I don't care how I'm feeling. I am about my father.
father's business. Are you about your father's business? I had to have a talk with God. I said, Lord, the Bible teaches us that you have given us the authority to cast out, not only cast out demons, but to cast out sickness and illness. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm casting out this sickness that the devil is trying to inflict on my body. Hallelujah. And I started reading my sermon. And before I knew it, I forgot I wasn't feeling well. See, I made a step toward God. When you make a step toward him, he'll make two steps toward you. Now, if I had just stayed in the bed and just nurtured that upset stomach, I would still be at home with an upset stomach. This is, see, I know the deceit of the devil. I know that the devil did not want me to be here for the very first Sunday of the new year. But it would have taken a whole lot more than that to stop me from fulfilling my duty to the Most High God. Because as our sermon was last Sunday, we are about what? Our Father's business. And my business is to deliver the Word of God. And that's what I have purposed in my heart to do, and that's what I'm going to do. I had to rebuke that devil. And you know what? He, do he doesn't just stop. He keeps on. You have to keep on rebuking him until he flees away. Don't you know Jesus was tested? Jesus, you know, we all go through a wilderness phase in our life. And I want you to know that. The wilderness phase is a phase when you're being tested. Test after test after test. But see, God will send you through those tests because he's trying to take you to another level. And with every new level comes a brand new devil who's going to try and stop you from doing what it is God wants you to do. But you have to be strong. You can't give in to that. I always remember Revelations 12 and 9. See, God, he knew this way back then when he had John to write this scripture thousands of years ago. It was written for a time such as right now. A time when people are just falling by the wayside. I mean, people are just leaving and leaving and leaving in a natural sense and in a spiritual sense. The whole world lost a whole lot of people last year in 2021. But I am declaring and I'm decreeing in the name of Jesus that we will not lose as many in 2022 as we did in 2021. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Somebody got to stand, brothers and sisters. God is calling on warriors. He's calling on so We got to be more prayerful. We got to get more connected to God. Don't y'all see what's happening in this crazy world? You see what's happening? That's because the people who we used to turn to to pray, like our grandmothers, like Terry's mother, my grandmother, all those warriors that have gone on to be with the Lord, who have passed the mantle down to us. But what are we doing with the mantle? Are we picking it up and carrying, carrying it where they left off? Or what are we doing? Most of the so-called Christians are at home, comfortable watching TV, watching service on TV. And that's okay, but don't let it be a substitute for coming to church. It's not supposed to be a substitute. It's supposed to be a supplement, something to enhance your journey to church, not something to replace it. And see, the devil knows what he's doing. He's sitting back laughing at all the deceit. People are being deceived. They claim that they're afraid to come out because of COVID. And I understand that. I understand that. But what I don't understand is that they can go every place else. They can go to work, which you have to go to work. But don't you have to come to God's house too? Don't make God an option. Some people look at God like he's optional. I'll go if I 
feel like it. I'll go if, if whatever their reason is. Don't make God an option. God is mandatory. And it bothers me that the number of people have just put God to the side. You would not even be here had it not been for God on your side. And this is the things that God gets. Most of the so-called Christians are scared to come out. Well, if the Christians are afraid to come out, what about the non-Christians? Who's going to stand up and pull them into God's house? This is the deceit that we're under. And the devil is sitting back laughing. And God, God is saddened. He's saddened by the so-called Christians who he would typically look for to pull in the weak. See, the strong, the strong people, we have to bear the infirmities of the weak. But if we're weak, then who's going to pull in the, the weak people? This is why the Christian society is just falling. And the devil's world is getting greater. You have more and more people, oh, I don't believe in God. Who you think made you? Who do you think blew the breath of life into your body? Who do you think made mankind? We didn't come from no big blast explosion. See, there are some things science cannot explain. Only the spirit. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear it. This has got to be a new year. If you want new, you have to do new. If you want better, you have to do better. It's insanity to think that you're going to do get better and you're doing the same old thing. That's insanity. Come on, we got to make a change in this new year. And it starts with the heart. We're asking God to give us all a clean heart. Our heart is our Wi-Fi to God. And sometimes people wonder why their prayer just bounce off the wall and don't go any further. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Ask God to give you a clean heart. The whole world is in trouble, brothers and sisters. This COVID-19 is a plague and it's not going to go away. I don't believe God sent it. But he has allowed it to manifest, and that's because the hearts of the people have just grown stone cold. God woke me up, and I shared this with some of you all before the pandemic hit. About six months before the pandemic hit, he woke me up out of my sleep. Pastor Taylor, you tell as many people as you can to turn their hearts back to me, and if they do not, Something is going to come and affect the whole world. I had no idea he was talking about this. I didn't know. I just knew. I just did what I, I was asked to do. I started telling people, even on Facebook, turn your hearts back to God. But see, I can only tell you. But it's up to you. You know, it's like you can't lead a horse. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make that horse drink. You have to fast and pray and ask God to give you the mindset to want to do God's will. You can't do it on your own. You just can't do it on your own. You cannot. A few days ago, I was here praying. See, a lot of times I come here and just come to the altar and pray and just open myself up for the Lord to pour into me what he needs me to pour into you. And he told me once again, Pastor Taylor, tell my people to turn their hearts back to me. See, we don't know how far this COVID is going. All these new variants. We've had the Delta variant, which was more vicious than the regular COVID. 
Now we have this Omicron variant, which is more vicious than the Delta. What's coming next? Don't you all see that this is a plague? I'm asking God to keep us all covered. All of his children, all of the Unity Mission Church family and friends, Lord, please keep us covered. The same way you kept the children of Israel covered who were in the land of Goshen when God sent those ten plagues upon the land of Egypt. Those people who were in his secret place. See, that's why it's good to read Psalms 91. It talks about that secret place. Putting us in that secret place. So we don't have to be affected by all these plagues that are coming upon the land. And you know what the greatest plague is? The plague of darkness. That means not knowing. That's what the word darkness means. It means not knowing what's going on. Not being cognizant of what's going on. See, ignorance, and that simply means not knowing. That's what the word ignorance means. It does not mean you're stupid or dumb. Or, it doesn't mean any of that. It simply means not knowing. It's my job as God deposits it into me. It's my job to give it to you. And I'm just telling you what God disclosed to me. Pastor Taylor, tell my people to turn their hearts back to him. We have shut God out of everything where he should be at. Most people have shut God out of their hearts. God is the last thing on their agenda. If that were not so, this church would be packed. All of the churches would be packed. God said to forsake not the assembling of the saints. Now we do believe in keeping ourselves protected. We all wear masks up in here. I'm the only one when I'm speaking who does not wear a mask. But when I go anywhere else, I'm masked up, prayed up, and all the other things. And we practice all the safety measures as outlined by the CDC. So we do our part to keep us safe. Then God will put the super on top of the natural and give us a supernatural protection. That's how God operates. We have to do our part. And then he'll do his. And our part in this new year is to get closer to God. Stop pity patting back and forth. Either you're going to be on God's side and stand strong, stand firm, whatever comes up against you. I have a lot of stuff coming up against me, more than you all know. But I know where my anchor is. Y'all know the anchor that I'm talking about. See, you got to be anchored in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why we're here today. We're here to let God know, Father, in this new year, I want better. And I understand that in order to get better, I have to do better. And we asking everybody to do better by God. Make God a priority. Stop kicking God to the curb. That's my God. Stop kicking him to the curb. Make him a priority in your life. Some people will go to work, rain, sleet, or snow. Hell can be falling down out of the sky. I got to go to work. What about God? See, that's how I feel about God. I taught school for over 30 years. But this is the most important job. I would periodically be late for that job and have one of the teachers to cover. But on this job for God, the only thing I ever fear in my life, I say, Lord, don't ever take your hand off me. Don't ever stop looking out for me. That's the only thing I fear. Because I know that as long as God has his hand on me, can't no devil in hell keep me down. That's the faith I have in my daddy, my heavenly daddy. Even when you're tested, when you're tried, and just tested and tested and tested. See, sometimes that's God preparing you 
for the next level. You can't go to the next level if you haven't passed that first level. You pass the first level by being tested. Don't you know Jesus was tested? Jesus went through a wilderness phase. So what do you think about you and I? And he was God in the flesh. You're going to be tried and tested. Let me tell you about Jesus. You think you're tried? You think the devil try you and test you? Well, what does that say? Jesus tested in the wilderness. This is a scripture God put on my heart. Look at Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. And it reads as follows. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit. What led him into the wilderness? The Spirit. The Spirit of who? God. To be tested. God wanted to make sure before Jesus started his full-fledged ministry that he was ready to go out there and face the world. Don't you know if Jesus had to be tested? We have to also. But will you stand the test of time? Or when you're tested, are you just going to fold up, give up and say, oh, I can't do that no more. I can't do that no more. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Even though he was the son of God, he was still flesh. He was hungry after not eating for 40 days and 40 nights. Some of y'all know how you feel if you go 40 minutes, your stomach starts growling. So what about 40 days? 40 days. The tempter, the devil, came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Look at how he's dangling food in front of Jesus. See, anytime you make up in your mind that you're not going to do something, watch out for the devil. Because he's going to dangle exactly what you said you're not going to do. He gonna, he's going to dangle it in front of your face. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. The bread from God is much more important. You know what the bread of God is? It's the word. This is what you have to feed your spirit. Boy, if people were as concerned about their spirit as they were their natural bodies, this would be a great world. 2022 has got to be our year. It's got to be our year. See, we just celebrated our 12th anniversary, didn't we? 12 years. Now, this is our year. This is our year. I love that sermon about the woman with the issue of blood. She had been sick for 12 years, 12 long years. But one day she made up in her mind that she was going to touch just the hem of Jesus' garment. That's all it took. Just the faith of touching the hem of his garment. She felt she would be made whole. Well, today, brothers and sisters, we're going to touch the hem of Jesus' garment so we can be healed of all of this crap that's permeating the community. Amen. It's time to live. And not just live, it's time to live a healthy life. Three times the devil came to Jesus. So when he comes to you and you rebuke him, do you think he's going to immediately go away? No, he didn't with Jesus. He came back at Jesus three times. But every time he comes at you, you have to rebuke him. Then the devil left after the third time. And the angels came and attended to Jesus. That lets me know that that devil gave Jesus a hard time. And Jesus is the son of God. So you know what the devil, how he weighs on us. But we have to do like Jesus and fight him with the word. But before you can fight him with the word, you have to first what? Know the word. And if you come to Unity Mission, Pastor Taylor is going to teach you the word. Thank you for watching The Power of Praise with Dr. Sabina Taylor, pastor of Unity Mission Church. Unfortunately, we are out of time. 
If you would like to purchase the DVD or CD of this entire sermon, plus a bottle of anointing oil and a prayer cloth, please send a $20 check or money order donation to Unity Mission Church, 1335 Oakland Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. This is Sermon 010922, and it is entitled, Will You Stand for God in 2022? Please include the sermon number, DVD or CD, your name, phone number, and the address to where you want your items shipped. We will pay for the shipping and handling. Please make your check or money order payable to Unity Mission Church. We now have digital downloads. Please specify if you want the digital download instead of the CD or DVD. You may use Cash App. Just go to dollar sign Unity Mission 1335 or you may go to our secure website unitymissionchurch.com and scroll down to our online donations tab and pay using your debit or credit card. After you enter the amount that you're paying, there's a line underneath that says write a note. Here you will leave your name, address, phone number, sermon number, and whether you want the DVD or CD, or you can request the digital download. If you cash app, please leave your name and phone number, and we will call you for your address and the sermon number. Thank you for watching The Power of Praise with Dr. Savina Taylor, pastor of Unity Mission Church. Unfortunately, we are out of time. If you would like to purchase the DVD or CD of this entire sermon, plus a bottle of anointing oil and a prayer cloth, please send a $20 check or money order donation to Unity Mission Church, 1335 Oakland Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. This is Sermon 010922, and it is entitled, Will you stand for God in 2022? Please include the sermon number, DVD or CD, your name, phone number, and the address to where you want your items shipped. We will pay for the shipping and handling. Please make your check or money order payable to Unity Mission Church. We now have digital downloads. Please specify if you want the digital download instead of the CD or DVD. You may use Cash App. Just go to dollar sign Unity Mission 1335 or you may go to our secure website, unitymissionchurch.com, and scroll down to our online donations tab and pay using your debit or credit card. After you enter the amount that you're paying, there's a line underneath that says write a note. Here, you will leave your name, address, phone number, sermon number, and whether you want the DVD or CD, or you can request the digital download. If you cash app, please leave your name and phone number, and we will call you for your address and the sermon number.